much like this, though. Close minded folks, you know what I'm saying? It's like we got a demo tape and nobody want to hear it, but it's like this, the South got something. <laughs> The South got something to say, and so did today's feature, Goody Mob, formed in 1991 by Big Gip, Cujo, CeeLo Green, and T Mo. Those words couldn't be more true about the Atlanta based MCs that had talent written all over them. The most difficult thing to do in this life is to reach your full potential as a human being. There are so many walls you have to break through to finally reach that point, and every success story has just that. Their own story of how they broke through all those obstacles and saw success. In the 90s, hip-hop had just entered an era that would become one of the golden ages for the genre, and where talent and creativity were really beginning to show. Coming out of its infancy stages of simplicity, the genre needed new voices that weren't afraid to break the barriers of how music was supposed to sound and look. Two things the southern region of America had in abundance and still have today. A sound and a picture of the different display of inspiration artistically. So when Andre 3000 said those words, it came from the heart. It came from the soul of the collective he was once a part of, the Dungeon family, who were all at one point seen as, well, outcasts. With the success of Outcasts as a two-man group, their record label saw an opportunity to continue that success, only with a different title and cast to expand the tree of the Dungeon family. That formed the Goody Mob, solo artist CeeLo, Big Gip, and duo from the Lumberjacks Timo and Cujo. Goody Mob came out and was noticeably different than anything on the radio or being broadcasted on TV. Initially, they painted the picture of young men socially and consciously aware of the world happening around them, good or bad. Their social consciousness wasn't at first accepted by the industry, but due to belief in the group by powers in the music industry, they were able to get their message out about injustice all around the world and the masses appreciated them for it. They were supposed to have become the next great hip hop group with an undertone of messages that could still help the struggle today. Had these things not happened, who knows how hip hop could have been shaped, especially in the South, who arguably reigned atop the genre since the early 2000s till today. So what happened? Why didn't Goody Mob have the success they were expected to? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Rico Wade, a producer and songwriter from Organized Noise, had a basement studio at his mother's house that would later be called The Dungeon. Drones of artists would pass through The Dungeon on their way through the Atlanta hip-hop scene, which started the loosely titled Dungeon Family. One of those groups that formed out of Wade's Dungeon Studio was Goody Mob. The Dungeon Family got together and began with pushing the group outcasts. Outkast's first album dropped in 1994 and went gold within the first three months. By April 1995, it was certified platinum. LaFace Records were convinced by producers of Organized Noise that the Outkast platinum album that featured Goody Mob, CeeLo, and Big Gip on the single Get Up and Get Out, and Timo and Cujo on Call of the Wild, was a great launch pad to put the four together and spring as a group officially called Goody Mob, and the landing was a success. They released their first album, Soul Food, produced by Organized Noise, November 7, 1995, and went gold months later in 96. That, along with Outkast's debut, are credited for bringing Southern music mainstream, and both are considered Southern classics. Stunt number one, discriminated against. Goody Mob's potential as a group was to be one of the greatest of all time. T-Mo was known for his heartfelt lyrics that painted pictures of their daily struggles having to trap to survive being trapped. Cujo was fiery on the mic and brought the machismo, so to speak, of the group. Then you had Big Gip, who was really the face of the group, only as in his look was the most distinct, 
with the gold teeth, scruffy beard, and either oversized afro or a perm that immediately stood out anywhere. Mind you, this was before CeeLo Green as we now know him. Speaking of CeeLo, he was always that one group mate you could tell had potential to one day go solo as he was just too good to only have pieces on a song, whether a hook here or verse there. He also captured on screen well to a point you could see his potential outside music as well. As they completed their first single, Cell Therapy, and released it to the world September 26, 1995, it didn't receive the airplay or video play because of the controversial message it contained. Without promotion, it still became a top 40 charting song and their highest charting song ever. The discrimination continued with DJs on the East Coast not wanting to play their records because of the controversy behind their music and also the notion that Southern artists weren't lyrical and were all about twerk music. As if they were slow in the way of the world. But Goody Mob was everything but that. Their initial success came all while no one wanted to give them a chance and that hurt their beginnings, but it didn't kill them just yet. Had they been given the support though they deserved sooner, man, imagine a world with Goody Mob's message coming from the South. Stunt number two, the World Party album. The reason I'd say their third album stunted Goody Mob's growth was because of everything that happened following that we'll talk about in stunt number three a little more. After putting out two message-driven albums that were both gold and successful in their own lane, Goody Mob decided to switch things up and celebrate their success on album three. They were traveling more, had seen the world some, and were starting to be influenced by different things than what they had to go through as struggling artists recording from a basement. On December 21, 1999, the World Party album was released. This album was supposed to display where the group was currently and produce more club records you could also hear freely on the radio and dance to. But their core fans didn't take well to them excluding the message they were known for in substitute for more braggadocious, flashy sounds and that showed in their lack of support. On the charts, it didn't do so well initially either, peaking at number 48 on Billboard and number 8 in Hip Hop and R&B. The South was also just experimenting with the crunk music sound that the music world just wasn't ready for yet, especially from the Goody Mob. In my opinion, had this album do better, they would have stayed together much longer and who knows what happens. Eventually, the album went gold. Stunt number three, the breakup. Possibly the biggest stunt in the growth of Goody Mob was their unfortunate and early breakup, which in actuality wasn't a breakup at all, just the inevitable happenings of hip hop history being made. From the beginning, this was supposed to happen. Timo and Cujo already had the lumberjacks before Goody Mob. CeeLo was actually supposed to have been an outcast initially and Big Gip was always his own artist, so them lasting three albums was a successful run. The end just happened right in the middle of that run, when they were transitioning, or trying to at least, from the socially conscious rap to the more party sounds for their third album. After their second album, Still Standing, dropped in 1998, it debuted number six on Billboard and number two on the hip hop charts and eventually went gold as well, giving them their second in a row. Third album, World Party, would eventually go gold, but not in time to keep them together. The first domino to fall was CeeLo. This was the perfect time for him to finally pursue a solo career and that's what he did. Some members of the group didn't take well to this news and tensions were created. CeeLo became a huge star after he left but still maintained his love for the group. Fourth album was released without Green in 2004 that seemed to diss CeeLo and force fans to have to choose sides. That was the end of Goody Mob as we knew it. After that album, Big Gip also went solo and Timo and Cujo were left to fend for themselves. 
The group would eventually squash their beefs and work on two more albums years later, but as far as their growth being stunted early on, these were the reasons. All in all, Goody Mob was a legendary hip-hop group that possibly pioneered the conscious hip-hop sound in the South and had three straight gold albums in their prime. Their music will live on forever and they still have motivation to work even today. Salute to Cujo, lost his leg in a car accident but is still striving and persevering and is one of the glue guys that tried to keep them together. Salute to Goody Mob, much respect, but for these reasons, their growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.